So we'll start with seventh paragraph in Federalist 55. This is part three. The true question to be decided then is whether the smallness of the number as a temporary regulation be dangerous to the public liberty, whether 65 members for a few years and 100 or 200 for a few more be a safe depository for a limited and well-regulated power of legislating for the United States of America. For the United States. I must own that I could not give a negative answer to this question without first obliterating, obliterating every impression which I have received with regard to the present genius of the people of America, the spirit which actuates the state legislatures and the principles which are incorporated with the political character of every, of every class of citizens. Now remember, we've talked about genius when he uses the word genius in the Federalist Papers. He's talking about the prevailing mood and understanding of the people. What majority of the people at that time believed about something. So he says, with the way Americans, majority of Americans look at this thing, with what's going on in the state legislatures, the lawmakers there, um, this, that. I'm unable to conceive that the people of America, in their present temper, or under any circumstances which can speedily happen, will choose and every second year repeat the choice of 65 or a 100 men who would be disposed to form and pursue a scheme of tyranny or treachery. I'm I'm, I am unable to conceive that the state legislatures which must feel so many motives to watch and which possess so many means of counteracting the federal, legis federal legislature would fail either to detect or to defeat a conspiracy of the latter against the liberties of their common constituents. So he says, whether well, 65 members in the House of Representatives or 100, as watchful as Americans are, as watchful as their state legislators are, as jealous of their positions those state legislators are, I can't see any 65 people that are going to be directed by you, elected by you, to, to cheat and to dishonor themselves by not doing what is right for you says, I just can't see that happening. I am equally unable to conceive that there are at this time or can be in any short time in the United States any 65 or 100 men capable of recommending themselves to the choice of the people at large who would either desire or dare within the short space of two years to betray the solemn trust committed to them. What change of circumstances, what change of circumstances time and a fuller population of our country may produce requires a prophetic experience, a spirit to declare, which makes no part of my pretensions. But judging from the circumstances now before us and from the probable state of them within a moderate period of time, I must pronounce that the liberties of America cannot be unsafe in the number of hands proposed by the federal constitution. The next paragraph, from what quarter can the danger proceed? Are we afraid of foreign gold? If foreign gold could so easily corrupt our federal rulers and enable them to ensnare and betray their constituents? How has it happened that we are at this time a free and independent nation? The Congress which conducted us through the revolution was a less numerous body than their successors will be. They were not chosen by, 
nor responsible to their fellow citizens at large. Though appointed from year to year and recallable at pleasure, they were generally continued for three years and prior to the ratification of the federal articles for still longer term. They held their consultations always under the veil of secrecy. They had the sole transaction of our affairs with foreign nations. Through the whole course of the war, they had the fate of their country more in their hands than it is to be hoped will ever be the case with our future representatives. And from the greatness of the prize at stake and the eagerness of the party which lost it, it may well be supposed that the use of other means, that force would not have been scrupled. Yet we know by happy experience that the public trust was not betrayed, nor has the purity of our public councils in this particular ever suffered even from the whispers of calumny. He says, look, we were in war. Members of Congress, Continental Congress, Confederation, are under our first constitution. These people were elected by the state legislatures at, uh, at, during the pleasure of state legislatures. In other words, they could be recalled any time. And then when we wrote our first constitution, the one we are trying to replace now, we gave them a term limit of three years, three one-year terms, and they'd go back. He says, if they were going to be corrupted by gold or money, they would have been done then because British would gladly have corrupted the Congress financially and not killed so many, not got so many of his soldiers killed and so much money lost in the war to finally lose the war. They didn't because most of our people were honest and virtuous. Most of the people we elected to the Congress of the United States. So he says, for that same reason, we're going to elect 65 members to the first House of Representatives, and later on that number will be added. And you're saying that it is easy for the 65 people to get corrupted? Well, we have this other example of our common Congress during the Revolutionary War and all the way up to 1787, and we haven't seen any sign of corruption. So uh, do not uh, just see evil everywhere. He's telling the Anti-Federalists that they can't be going around seeing evil in everything and everywhere. They have to be uh, putting more trust in their own people, in their own representatives. Plus, if the representatives get out of hand, like he said in the previous paragraph, people will realize it immediately. State legislatures, members of the state legislatures, state le legislators will realize it. They'll put a stop to it. So don't, don't be so distrustful anti-federalists and don't mislead the people in believing that we are not doing something virtuous for our people by presenting this constitution. So I will continue with the last long paragraph of Federalist 55 in the next video.